Po man. So, one of the longest football beefs have found some new legs today. Even after you thought these folks have made up, they're back at it again. And as a longtime Bucks fan, this is kind of it's kind of funny. I can't lie to y'all, bro. But Keyshawn Johnson and Warren Sapp are at each other's necks. Warren Sapp fanned some flames when he went and spoke with Jason Whitlock while discussing Marshawn Lynch's interview on Club Shay Shay when they spoke about Russell Wilson. What was the issue with you and Keyshawn? Why, why didn't y'all click? Uh, he followed me around the Pro Bowl the whole 1999 year when, you know, lobbied me, you know, put his wife with my wife, kids with my kids. Hey, man, I'm telling you, dog, you just lost the, the championship 11 to 6. I'll get you that touchdown. I guarantee you. Me, me and you come together, we're going to get a Super Bowl, whatever. So I'm like, all right. So I go in because when you lose the NFC championship game back in the day, your coaching staff is now the coaching staff for the Pro Bowl. And Tony Dungy and us had a situation where we were, you know, about to fire Mike Mike Shula because the, the Glaciers weren't happy with the performance in the championship game. And then Tony said, if you fire him, you got to fire us all. So we almost lost our whole coaching staff. But that that came back together. And then I, I, I lobbied for Keyshawn on the team. I'm like, yo, let's go get him. He wants, but he's going to make more money than you. I have no, I, what? That That is never an issue in my locker room. Wives, kids, and money is off limits. So, he came on the team. They got him a nice contract. We in the offseason running around, me, Brooks, and Lynch, and Rondé, the whole crew out there doing what we do in the offseason, and there's no Keyshawn. I said, you said you are going to leave my offense, dog. Where, where you at, baby? Oh, um, I got some things in L.A. I need to take care of, you know. I'm like, no, 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 no. You told me you was going to leave my offense, so now I need you here. And now when he gets here, we break the huddle. <laughs> he don't know the play. He don't know where to line up. He don't know if he on or off the ball. Oh, man, trust me, dog. And then he didn't like Sean King. I'm like, well, Keyshawn, you're not getting another quarterback. <laughs> this is what you signed up for. We have Sean King, my man. You got to get along with King. Now, now, and you know you don't bother my quarterback. Wow. So, so I'm telling you, it, it was ugly. It, I mean, at times we... We did some good things together and won a championship, no doubt about it. But Gruden just, ooh, Gruden pushed every button in his body. I mean, Gruden was going to hold you responsible for every, what? It, it was beautiful because Tony was, you know, mild-mannered, never cursed, you know, made sure we was all, you know, on the details and everything and, you know, just wouldn't really push the button. You know, the, we'll play field position, three and punt. We'll play great defense and whatever. <sighs> Man, Keyshawn took full advantage of that, man. I'm telling you, took full advantage of it. And no, nah, he, he didn't lead us at all. That's why we went and got Jared Vicious and went and got Keenan McCardle. <laughs> he was not and, leading. And then, and and because again, I can remember being in the locker room and I don't remember if a playoff game or whatever, <laughs> where Keyshawn took a pot shot at Tony and triggered me. And, oh, and he I was remember. special. And oh no, he was special, dog. I'm telling you, on, on a whole nother level, dog. Whole nother level, man. Whole nother level. But uh, but uh, but other stuff, he's a good brother. I mean, I ain't got nothing wrong with him. But as a teammate, I'd never take him again. So in response to all that, Keyshawn Johnson says this right here: Please stop lying. I would never in a million years follow your sorry ass ever. You're an embarrassment to society. Sorry, I mean sorry. Please keep my name out your mouth, fake ass motherfucker. Sad. Go get some help. Tired of you using my name. Only dude I will follow is 55. Now, if you don't know who 55 is, boy, you don't know nothing about nothing, my boy. Do your homework on Big DB, Derrick Brooks, man. I had to. One last thing, LMA. Yo, someone is crazy, and it ain't me. And he added Warren Sapp again with the laughing emoji saying, I promise I will not respond to his silliness for at least another 30 years. But this is a photo of them two at the Colorado Buffs game recently. Now, if you know Warren Sapp, Warren Sapp ain't ducking no smoke. So big homie says, Key, you know you lobbied all week. Name calling? I wouldn't do that. Just the truth from you once on your time in Tampa. Whole Buccaneers was there. D. Brooks, Lynch, Tony Dungy, really dog? Sorry would be the last thing I was. And then he reposted a picture again saying, Ask 55 D. Brooks, would he follow me or any of the other 51 men on that roster? Gonna make that Keyshawn video coming out the huddle for our 20th anniversary. Sap don't lie while not fishing. Precious law take my hand. Video at tailgate. Someone mentioned Keyshawn and said, Key, he said you're a good brother and all off the field. He just wouldn't want you as a teammate again. You have to listen, think on it for a few, then respond. Instead, you're going off emotions and looking bad. 
Sap says he only hears what you want to, just facts, and lay out know the truth hurts. Someone says this is not the first time Sap has talked about you being a poor teammate, and Sap says he knows it. Who else got sent home from the team? Selective memory. Now, if you guys don't know, and uh, let me tell y'all, bro, as a child, this was interesting watching this shit develop. I told y'all I'm a lifelong, lifetime Bucks fan. The Dolphins was playing a little trash. I seen Marino get his ass smoked by the Jaguars in the playoffs, like 60-something points to seven or something. I couldn't be a Dolphins fan. I'm sorry. So my team was a little further up the road. I was a Tampa Bay Bucks fan when I seen them with Sean King as a quarterback. So Sap has told the story before. Keyshawn was the first diva receiver that i ever seen in my life i don't know if it was other folks before that i don't know if michael irvin was a diva but he was like you know controversial for other things but, we, but we're not gonna talk about that but Keyshawn was the first diva receiver that i could remember i'm younger than a lot of my audience though so i just gotta say that but like sap said he said this before i'm not gonna play the audio because this may be copyrighted but you can see the images when he spoke about it that whole weekend Keyshawn followed him and asked to join the team he lobbied for him joined the team and that first year didn't go too well Keyshawn only had like 800 yards this still was a run heavy offense work done ran for over a stack but the team just couldn't really shake much in the playoffs though the next year they bring in brad johnson things still ain't go too well Keyshawn got a thousand yards receiving that year but we played worse so they fired the coach bringing john gruden of course you guys know that's a super bowl year Keyshawn still get his stats but they bring in joe Dravishes and also keenan mccardell and you know i was happy when we brought in keenan mccardell remember i told y'all when reno got his ass smoked by the jacksonville jaguars and mccardell was on that damn team Although Jimmy Smith did most of the work, though, I can't even lie. But yeah, dog, we win the Super Bowl, but that comes from Rudin holding everyone accountable. The next season comes, Keyshawn ain't worrying about the team, he worrying about Keyshawn. It's a Monday night football game. Gruden runs a package with just one wide receiver. But instead of Keyshawn, they asked McCardell to go out there for the one wide receiver package. Then Keyshawn explodes on Gruden on the sideline. Once again, it's the middle of the season. From that point, they shut Keyshawn Johnson down for the rest of the season. As a kid, I'm like, what? <laughs> I didn't understand like locker room cancer type stuff, but they shut him down and that um, I just like I'm just like what the hell? Why would they not play our best receiver? I was confused as hell. But they shut him down and um they eventually shipped him out for next to nothing to the Cowboys. Now since then this has been an ongoing feud. Warren Sapton called that boy out his name before. Keyshawn, I knew you were a bitch, and thanks for making it all worthwhile. <laughs> It, it's just been crazy, man. It's been crazy. But once again, dog, you got to understand, Keyshawn was like the Antonio Brown of his day. Not as bad, though. More like on T.O. level. Like his rookie year, the man wrote a book called Just Give Me the Damn Ball, bro. <laughs> once again, to me, it didn't seem as wild as it actually was. It's because I was a kid, so I was learning the NFL as all these things were going on. But it was a great time, dog. I have no ill will towards Keyshawn Johnson, dog. Even though he may have had his poor moments, he still helped the Bucks get a ring. You cannot lie about that. Very dynamic receiver. But y'all let me know what y'all think in the comment section below, man. Make sure you smash that like button and turn on the notification bell for more updates on content just like this. And subscribe on your way out, man. It's your boy Stacy. Yo.